Well, hello there. My name is HW, and thank you so much for watching Tone Jiggy TV. My friends, today we're going to talk about how to make any profile sound great. How to make any profile sound great. And I want to graduate you all. I want to get you away, 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 because this, this is my new purpose in life. This is my new vocation. My life's work is to help you get your tone understanding, your ear, from a two-band EQ, highs and lows, from a three-band EQ, bass, middle, treble, from a four-band EQ, bass, middle, treble, presence, I want to get you to an eight-band EQ. You're going to be dangerous, d -d 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 dangerous if you hear guitar tone and can think about it in terms of eight bands. Okay, two bands would be like this. Two bands would be, it's bright, it's dark. That's two bands. That's two. How is bass and treble? Three bands is like, wow, it's mid rangey. That's mid range, low bass, low treble, right? Uh, wow, that's quite bright and present. Four bands. I want to get you into eight bands and I want to talk about it. And so, here's the secret this will turn any tone junkie profile into a Michael Britt sounding profile, any Michael Britt profile into a tone junkie sounding profile. This will turn modern amps vintage, vintage amps modern. This will get you to cut through the mix. If you understand eight bands of EQ on this Kemper, I guarantee you, you will put your earphones on, you will dial in the best lead sounds you will know, you will get how to boost your guitar, how to get the tone you want out of almost any profile. Now, there's still some stuff baked into the profiles, Fender, Marshall, blah, blah, blah. But if you got a good sounding Marshall, you can get that sound any way you want. Eric Johnson, Eric Clapton, Bonamassa, Ingve. You can get it to sound any way you want if you understand eight bands of EQ, okay? You ready? Let's do it. <laughs> That's one of the best profile packs we've ever made. That and, be, and that's because it's one of the best amps that's out there. For a Marshall-y thing, this, the Divide LDW is just in, incredible. Here are our eight bands, okay? There are these eight numbers. 80, 160, 320, 640, blah, 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 blah. We don't want to talk in terms of numbers. What are you, crazy? What are we, calculators? We're guitar players. We're tone junkies, okay? So chill out. I'm not going to talk in terms of numbers. I'm going to rename them for you. You ready? I'm going to rename them and demystify it. 80 is now deep. Here are deeps. Yo, dude, you got the deeps in that tone? 160 is now bass. This is our bass. 160. This is a nice area for bass. 100 is usually where producers are cutting. Sometimes they'll cut down to 120. So in going up somewhere at 140, 160, definitely between 150 and 200 is a nice little area to put up some bass that you're not going to sort of be competing with the low end that a producer wants to take out of a track. That's my opinion. That's, I think, true for a lot of styles of music. Of course, rules are meant to be broken. 320. What's that? Mid no, no, no. Don't get ahead of ourselves. This is called fullness. 320. We're not in the mids yet. We're low, low, low. We're still low, but we're like high bass. What is this? We're calling it fullness. 640. Low mids, we talked about this in the last video. Low mids, 1250, high mids, all right? What's the difference between low and high mids? 640, 500 to 600, 640 for our purpose right now. Tube screamer, tube screamer honk, cut a little treble, cut a little bass, tube screamer honk, big thick. It's the low end of a bullhorn. 1250, what's that? High mids, what's high mids? Marshalls are high mids. Marshalls have high mids. You know what else has high mids? Uh, a clon. Higher mids. The reason Marshalls and Tube Screamers don't sound the same is because mid-range is too broad a term to really identify what type of the guitar sound we're talking about. Bass, middle, and treble, that's for children. Child's play. 2,500 treble. We're calling this our treble. Watch it, guys. This is one of the most important controls. Most important controls. This, along with the mid-range, along with the fullness, along with the bait, gosh, you're gonna see how this works together. Then we're gonna go to 5,000. We're calling that presence. This is now our presence, that stuff. Right? This is our 
This is what, what makes us feel like it's right with us or not so right with us. And then 10,000, don't touch it. Listen, there's another level here. Don't touch this. I'm telling you, for, for, the, for Kemper and the guitar, I wouldn't worry about 10,000 right now. Uh, I really wouldn't worry about it at all. Um, you're, it's very, uh, there's a very low marginal utility for how we're using 10,000 uh, 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 hertz. It's just, we'll get into it, but you could, you know, what's going to be up there? Clack of acoustic guitar is still above us. Um, uh, symbolance of, uh, you know, symbols are going to be way above us there. So 10,000, there's, there's a use for it, but we're not talking about it. It's, it's very, uh, it's, in my opinion, it's not that useful for live tone. Uh, but you know, a producer can, can do what they want, especially in a stripped down mix. You might want some of that, but it's not useful for us. Here it is. Eight things. Deep, bass, fullness, low mids, high mids, treble, presence, don't touch. Okay, you heard the regular sound there. That was the LDW5. Again, it sounds like this. Now, let's turn on one of our EQs. And this is our EQ. Um, and I'm going to put these out in the future as downloads. I'm still just dialing some in with some different guitars and I'll put some out. Thickeners, lead boosts, all sorts of stuff. Let's go down and now let's look. I've turned on an EQ and then let's talk about what we're doing. Without the EQ. With the EQ. What do you hear? Mids. Mids is what you hear. Except that's not all you're hearing. Let's decode it. Okay, first rule of EQing stuff. Let's take away before we start. What we're subtracting is some of the deep. What we're subtracting is some of the lows. Now let's go through this because I want you to hear what is deep and what is low because you got to understand this. Okay. Let's boost the bass while leaving the, the deeps the same. Let's keep, here's the bass now. Now let's cut the bass. Bass should be used to affect size. How big do we want it? Bass can be used to take out muddiness. But bass can very effectively be used to, to change the size of our sound. How big and, I don't want to say full, because we're going to get to fullness. So let's leave our bass just down a little bit. Where's our deep? Check this out. Depending on what you're listening on, you may or may not be able to hear this. Is the deep switch on a Marshall. It's a 412, okay? It's going to that bigger rock territory and that's fine. We're gonna leave these cut a little bit because what I wanna do in this sound on and off, we're going from bright Marshall in your face to more mid-rangey mix ready Marshall. So, after we address the bass, we're bringing down the bass a little bit because we don't need it as full, but we're not bringing it down to the level that it, it makes the amp small. Deep, we really don't need. We often don't need it. In a mix, you're not going to need it. What we are doing because we're cutting the bass is raising the fullness up. Let's experiment with fullness now. Here's the sound uh, at zero with the fullness. <laughs> Now we're cutting the fullness. If you want less full guitars because you have a dense mix, 320 on here is where I would suggest it. This takes you from Foo Fighters rhythm. This is Dave Grohl Foo Fighters rhythm kind of sound here. Take out that fullness, put it in. You could put other guitars on top of it. Now raise it up. Now let's boost that fullness. It's not quite a honk but you can hear how we're really in between bass and mids. 
you know? Where it's not the tube screamer honk. We're not 500, we're not 550, we're not 600. We're at 320, we're at this fullness thing where we're making something sound kind of like a, kind of like big amp or small amp. There's still some of that if we cut too much, but really there's a focus or a not so focus. Focus or not so focus. Fullness is about how full our guitar feels, how big it feels, not necessarily how much low end there is. Very, very big kind of big sounding without being bassy. A lot less of it, right? Okay, for our purpose, we're gonna leave this. What did we have this at? I really should have paid attention. I'm gonna go out, come back in. There we go, we had it at 3.2. Now our low mids, we've got at 1.5, a small push. Because it's Marshall, we're pushing the upper mids a lot more. That's a little spoiler. But low mids, we want to increase. Here's that sound again. Here's increase in the low mids. Sounds like a tube screamer. It really does sound like a tube screamer. Here's that, uh, it has that same quality, you know what I'm saying? Here's lowering 640, or lowering the lower mids. You hear that? Still a lot of upper mids, but we're cutting these lower mids. This is a good way to think about this. You could have one sound where if you want to scoop a Marshall, but not take so much of the upper mids out, you're going to leave the upper mids, you're going to scoop the lower mids. Now you're going to get a nice rhythm sound, which maybe goes in the background there. <laughs> cut in the right mix there, but we, we don't have a full guitar, that's going to be great for taking it out, layering some parts. It's really going to sit back there a little bit. We would even, think of it this way, we would describe this as brighter, even though we've, we haven't taken anything away. That to me sounds brighter than this. Whereas that sound, the brightness is the same. I can hear the brightness, the treble, the higher mids haven't changed, but I would describe this sound as full, where the other one I would describe as bright. And in my head, that would mean bright, a little more scooped, a little more. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is very, this is kind of the, we could call this almost like a focus control, but it's so similar to the other focus control, which is the upper mids. Now, because we're at a Marshall here, it loves, and the typical Marshall sound loves some of these upper mids. Let's boost it even more. That's a little bit ridiculous. Sometimes that's referred to as the fire breathing frequency because it sounds like a dragon about to burn down whatever, you know, Daenerys or something or the Iron Throne. It's going to, it's about to just, you know what I'm saying? Huge. That's the fire breathing frequency. It's been called that by mainly me on this channel uh, just now. Treble. Here's our highs. This guy's is where is why Eric Johnson is warm and big Marshally warm and why other Marshalls like Hendrix are very bright. It's the treble. Okay, cool. Let's scoop it out. We can lose 
lose some presence there, but when you put that on a single coil, you really get a, a lot more usable flexibility. Here now I'm cutting. That is so useful in terms of uh, bridge pickup. We don't want it. we want to go for the Eric Johnson super bass warmer thing, but we also can dial in a really rip roaring get in your face type thing. For now, we're going to leave this at zero because the original profile I didn't feel had too much treble as opposed to I want to give it more mids. Now the other one is here presence. I've cut it just about five, but let's listen to it. Let's listen to it here. There's a real forward and back quality. There's a real far away and close to you quality when you talk about uh, 5,000 and up. On the guitar, it's very much there. <laughs> 10,000, I'll show you why not to touch it. say this. It's never really that useful uh, by itself. It's useful in conjunction with things like pickups and it changes a ton because the content, the high-end content of pickups is very different. <laughs> Touch it. Go ahead and touch it. In fact, we'll we'll just go ahead and touch it, because I'll say this is this is kind of my opinion of this control. In the mix, you might not even really notice this as much as uh, the mid range coming through. But a lot of times with a humbucker, I don't think it necessarily sounds better or different. With the pick, with the the only thing I worry about boosting it is that sometimes with a single coil, it can get a little bright, a little too snappy, a little too much. But with the right sound, it's worth it. But use that as you will. I don't necessarily listen to that so much because. Um, you can really start to compete with other things. So for some fine tuning for a solo or something, I love it, but um, but I wouldn't call it as integral as some of these other things in here, but it's, it, it's useful, it's useful. I'm being too hard on 10,000. You're useful, buddy, you're useful. Okay, check this out. That was one EQ, right? Back to our original sound, sounds like this. Here's our, here's our EQ sound. I mean, that just takes it from absolute rock to absolute rock. Now, 
let's try a different EQ. Lower on the deep, lower on the bass, lower on the fullness, HW, come on. What? Lower on, or higher on 640, these are lower mids. Upper mids, we're going up. Treble, we're going up. Presence, we're going up. 10, I'm leaving it alone. 10,000, we're gonna leave it alone for now. And it's gonna go like this. <laughs> Not so mid-rangey leady, but brighter leady. What we've done is we've taken out fullness and bass and we've made it a small, more cutting through amp. And this is where you're gonna get, you know, the... Now, it may not be great for rhythm. Or maybe it is, depends on what you want. But uh, what I do like about it is it's really great for adding a lot of definition and clarity when you have a good amount of gain to a single coil, especially the in-between sounds. Check this out. you hear that I get all this extra sort of low end. I'm using the, a, a darker pickup position uh, with the in-between sounds and that we're getting the neck in the middle. Actually, it sounds great both ways, but um, if you want that extra clarity, you can do that. Because what do we do? We cut the deeps, we cut the bass, we cut the fullness, and we just add it, and what we added in to not make our sound sound like a complete, you know, uh, uh, walkie-talkie was we added in low mids, we added in um, some uh, some treble, some high mids, and we didn't go we didn't go crazy with the presence. <laughs> It just puts the lead in a very narrow spot. It's a very squawky, uh, pokey lead spot, and it just allows this single voice, something that's just gonna cut right through the mix. It's important when you think about getting through the mix. You wanna cut through the mix, you don't wanna plow through the mix. Plowing through the mix creates a car accident. You wanna like neatly slice through Give it your part, say your lead line, and then get back. Get back into the mix. You want to be in the mix, and then you want to cut through the mix, and then you want to retreat back in. We don't want to plow through anything. We don't want to knock over the bass player or the drums on our way to being heard. It's, it's, really, um, it's really a fine line. I hope this has been useful. I'm gonna have some of these downloadable, but I really, really, guys, I really think if you can graduate your thinking and if you can get in here and really use these parameters, use these parameters, I'm telling you, use these parameters, this is gonna be the way to make any profile sound fantastic. Now look, is a twin gonna sound like a Marshall? No but you can get that twin to cut the mix, to sit in the mix, to support a vocalist. You can get that twin mid-rangey and beautiful. You can get it bright and chimey with a, with a shallow low end. You're gonna be able to get that twin to do whatever you want it to do. You're gonna be able to take a Marshall-esque profile like this, this, LD, uh, this divide LDW, 
and you're going to be able to get it to breathe fire, scoop it out. You can get it to Hendrix, to uh, 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 Johnson. You're going to get it all, all wherever, wherever it needs to be, right? You're going to be able to take something Marshall-esque. And if you really can get good at this, not only can you cover the gamut of history, of tones, but you're going to be able to listen to something and go, yeah, you know what? I think my guitar for the lead here needs more of this. You're going to be able to listen to your other guitar player and listen. Where is he not? Oh, you're going to be able to try out what happens if I go for a more full mid-rangey boost kind of thing to my EQ like we did in this X slot or when we go for that thinner lead one. You're going to know when to use these things. And the great thing is in performance mode, you can just drop these in, already have them assigned, and you can be using your main sound with just some EQ changes. And of course, these blocks all have a volume control. They also have low and 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 uh, they also have low cuts and high cuts. Um, so you have a lot of options, a lot, a lot of options. You're going to be able to use these as, as lead boosts for sure. Boost those mids and uh, up the level, down the level, do whatever you need them, need them to do. Uh, it's really, really useful. Uh, I really think this is the key to unlocking how to get all you want out of your guitar sound. How to listen to another guitar sound and go, oh, I think it's this, I think it's this. And the more you turn these knobs and play your guitar, the more you will become familiar, really intimately familiar with, with, with these, this set of frequencies and sort of thinking in terms of an eight band EQ. I hope that brings some of you value. Thanks so much for watching, guys. My name is Ben HW. Thanks so much for watching Tone Junkie TV. HW. Out.